The Run Run Tree by B.L. Norris The Farmer Into the woods, little girl should never be. Be careful, be careful of the run run tree. The truth will be buried underneath scarlet leaves. You may meet your end under the run run tree. It was a bitterly cold night. A full moon bullied the purple sky above, providing an ominous light on the solitary farm below. And while the rest of his family slept in the darkened farmhouse, the father worked diligently in the barn by the orange glow of the lantern. He, the farmer, ignored the young woman silently sobbing on the floor. The chains affixing her to the wall rattled softly as her body shook. The former stood, wiping the sweat from his bloody brow. Exhausted, he looked down at his handiwork. He'd become rather good at this work. He stepped back and the girl wailed at the sight of the bloody, dissected body that once belonged to her fiancé. The former raised his brows. He'd once shared the girl's reaction to such atrocities, but not anymore. He'd become immune to suffering. He turned to her and said, Don't worry. It'll be all over by tomorrow. The words hung in the air as he blew out the light. It had been early when they come for her the next day. The rooster had just finished his morning ballad. The young woman had barely slept, of course. The stain of fresh morning piss stretched across the crotch of her jeans. Her eyes blazed with a fierce hatred at the farmer when he walked into the barn. He was wearing the same bloody overalls from the night before when he deboned her fiancé, Michael. The farmer lowered his gaze on her with indifference, resting a shotgun against his shoulder. A little girl appeared from behind him, a beautiful child of no more than seven years old. Get on with it, the farmer said, holding out a key to her. The little girl took the key from her father and shyly walked over and freed the woman from her chains. The young woman stood and stretched the soreness from her body. And suddenly, a harrowed woman burst into the the barn. What are you waiting for? She exclaimed. It's time to... The woman's eyes fell on the young woman, and she went silent. The little girl was the mirror image of this woman. They shared the same expressive green eyes and blonde hair as white as clouds. But the horrors of life were branded on the older woman's face. She, she looks like Ashley, the woman finally said, clasping her hands together so tightly her knuckles went white. Yep, the father said curtly. Still, we better get going. The young woman looked at the older woman pleadingly. But her mother's eyes welled with tears before she dashed out of the barn. The captured woman looked at the farmer's expressionless face. His eyes held no sympathy for her. Go on, he said to his young daughter. The little girl took her hand and they walked out of the barn together into the direction of the field. The child hummed softly as they made their way. The woman considered making a run for it. But she she could feel the farmer's shotgun trained on her back. Part 2. The Run Run Tree What's your name? She asked the little girl. I'm not supposed to talk to you, 
the little girl said softly. Surely you can tell me your name. The little girl thought for a moment. Lydia, she said. Lydia, that's such a pretty name. Lydia rewarded the comment with a snaggletooth grin. What's your name? My name's Simone. 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 Lydia tested the name a few times in her mouth before deciding she liked it. Where are we going, Lydia? Simone asked. To the Run Run Tree. What's the Run Run Tree? Lydia's lips tightened. She didn't answer. They walked on until the flat field abruptly ended, delivering them to the mouth of the woods. Simone looked over her shoulder. She could see the farmer in the distance with the shotgun. We have to go in there, Lydia pointed to the woods. Why? Simone asked. What's in there? The run run tree, Lydia said with a hint of irritation before tugging Simone forward. Simone's heart raced. Lydia, what is the run run tree? That. Lydia pointed to the tiny tree in front of them. Its white branches were gnarled and grew slightly downward. It was an odd tree that, despite the cold weather, grew vibrant white and scarlet leaves. Come on, Lydia said, squeezing Simone's hand. A light mist had rolled in and gathered around them. Simone reached out and touched one of the tree's leaves and quickly jerked her hand away. The leaf had a pulse. Lydia looked at Simone solemnly. Simone's attention turned to the wooden cross sticking out of the ground a few yards from the tree. The name Ashley was scrawled across it with the dates 1995 to 2016. A ring of flowers laid the feet of the cross. I put the flowers there, Lydia said proudly. Simone remembered Lydia's mother saying she looked like Ashley. Lydia, who, who's Ashley? Simone asked, licking her lips. My sister, Lydia said softly. She's the one that found the run run tree. Tara shot through Simone. Lydia, why did Ashley call it the run run tree? Because that's what she said when she saw the tree. What? What, what did she say? Lydia's attention turned to a dark figure coming out of the mist. I, I have to go now, Lydia said as the run run tree began to tremble. Lydia, wait, don't, Simone begged. But the little girl was swallowed by the mist. The tree shook violently. Now as the figure came closer and closer, closer, closer. And Simone caught the movement out of the corner of her eye. There standing at Ashley's grave was a ghostly girl who looked very much like her. The girl pointed at Simone as the figure came closer. And the ghost's jaw stretched open as she screamed, Run!